Thank you so much for joining. I am Gabe, the O-Scope Wizard. You have made it to the Techno Lair on this lovely Baby Friday, favorite day of the week, soft close to the week. So if you have big plans for the weekend, you should start them tomorrow on actual Friday. But Baby Friday is, uh, I think it's, it's going to be a phenomenon. It's going to make all our lives better. Uh, you can start eating candy in the morning. Um, you know, maybe go for a walk this afternoon. Start your weekend. Kick your weekend off. Hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Today we're starting, or we're going to continue our quest in our DIY Sonos style amplifier. I have my timer. We're going to dive right in to doing our digital potentiometer. So on the last episode, I promised, I promised that I would be checking out this dual channel digital potentiometer, and here it is, the DFR0520 from, where is it from, DF Robot. And you can see that it came boxed up nicely, it came with some wires, it comes with headers to make it easy to connect to your Arduino, so it's an Arduino part, but it, it works fine for a Raspberry Pi because it uses the SPI interface, or SPI interface, and you can see I spent Quite a bit of time trying to get this thing unboxed and out of the package, uh, and I videoed the whole, pro whole process. I don't, I don't know what it is. My kids love, love watching unboxing videos. Um, I will admit that I have watched Unbox Therapy dozens of times, so I also like watching unboxing videos, but this is it, uh, close up. It is a dual channel, 100 kilo ohm potentiometer that I then needed to plug into my board. So here's me desoldering the potentiometers that were on my board. And once they were desoldered, oh, well, I thought that was going to work. Once they were desoldered, um, I actually connected up my Raspberry Pi to my potentiometer. So I have um, these are the connections, so it is uh, luckily pretty easy to do, um, but I connected clock to clock, I connected chip select to chip select, MOSI to SI, and MISO to SO. So those are my actual connections, and why did I do those connections? Well, let's talk a little bit about the spy bus. So here's the, here's the website for the potentiometer. If anybody wants to buy one themselves, it is a whopping $4.90. They ship it pretty fast. Um, it is 10 or 100,000 ohms, and I'm replacing a 10,000 ohm potentiometer, so there was a little bit of a hiccup there. But as I said before, it's got two potentiometers in one chip, which is really neat. Here is the actual description of this potentiometer, which I showed last episode. Um, but what we want to do today is now that I have it connected to my Raspberry Pi with the spy bus, we need to control it. So I can send commands to this guy and here, here's its description. So you send a command telling the potentiometer which potentiometer I want to write to, either potentiometer 0 or potenti potentiometer 1, and then I need to write a value to that potentiometer telling the potentiometer how much resistance to um, enable. So it's basically going to move this wiper pin up and down this resistor bank in between these two terminals. So you have terminal A and terminal B, and then the wiper terminal, terminal W. Um, and here is a diagram of the actual spy traffic. So you send the command byte, and then you send the data byte, and you send a clock and a chip select. And that seems like that would be a lot to have to program. But luckily, luckily for us, if I go over to pinout.xyz, my favorite pinout site for the Raspberry Pi, and once you do that, you can click the spy tab along the top, and it very conveniently, thank you, Raspberry Pi community, for making everything easy, which is 
I mean, there's all these Raspberry Pi clones, and I've tried a lot of them. But ultimately, what the power of the Raspberry Pi boils down to is the community support. So everybody just doing projects like this one, and you can find really good documentation on how to make it all work. So to connect the Spy, if I go to this website, it, it does the same connections as I showed earlier on my picture, but um, Spy Zero S Clock uh, is connected to my digital potentiometer S Clock, and then so is MSIO and MOSI. And I used CE0 Chip Select Zero. Um, and you, there's actually two Spy buses on the Raspberry Pi, and I'm using SPI Zero, so the first Spy bus. And I actually had a joke. I had a joke. I had a joke. Let me hit it. Let me hit it. If sports were digital, we'd all want to be number zero. Huh? Huh? If sports were digital, we'd all want to be number zero? Nothing? I thought about that when I walked out the door um, yesterday. And um, it, it felt like just a perfect nerd joke. <laughs> I'm making myself laugh. It might not make you laugh. In fact, I posted something on Instagram the other day about the fact that I was reading uh, the potentiometer nomenclature upside down as EOI instead of 103. And I had like a description of it in my Instagram pictures description. And my wife's like, that's it's not a joke. And it, it's not a joke, okay? It's not funny. You are failing at joking. So, you know, everybody tries. <laughs> oh, so uh, back to the spy interface. I'm using the first spy interface, spy zero. And right here is some code that allows me to control um, the spy bus. So I thought that I would just start with this code to see if I could transfer some bits. It looks pretty easy. So you import spy dev and then you make a device. Uh, based off this library. It's a Python library, which is nice because I'm using Python. Uh, EOI, I thought, I thought EOI was funny. Uh, my wife did not. You know what? Different strokes for different folks. Nerds think stuff is funny, and that's okay. That's because we're nerds, and we can all, we can all see the humor in that. Um, uh, now, so I'm going to make us, let's, let's do this. Let's actually do this little simple code. So I am going to make a uh, little bit of code here. S see if I can make this typing pseudo nano, and we'll do a we'll call this spy test. Spy test dot py. Um, and 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 let's uh let's let's cheat a little bit. Let's copy and paste. So let's just. Well, I thought I was gonna copy and paste. I have another website that actually had a slightly better description of how to control a spy device with the Raspberry Pi. Um, I liked this one because it actually described uh, turning on the spy bus. My spy bus was uh, not on, so I did need to turn that on. So I had to go to Raspy config, enable the spy bus inside of my peripherals. Um, and then I did have to, so this guy installs spy dev straight from source and compiles it, but I, I did not did, do that. I uh, pip, are you guys familiar with pip? I did a sudo pip3 install spy dev. Um, let's, uh, let's copy this, copy. And you know what, I'm gonna put a link, I'll put a link to all these, um, websites that I'm using, but I want to use a megahertz. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. That is one million or one megahertz. As I said, I'm using spy device, the first spy bus, so spy bus zero, and I'm using chip select zero. That's how I have my spy device wired. Um, I showed in the picture earlier. Then I need to do some transferring, I believe. So I need to spy transfer spy dot x fur let's see if we can see me typing x fur so this is going to do the spy bus transfer and then i need to send i want to send um a 
command to both potentiometers, because I want to control both potentiometers at the same time. That's a big advantage of the digital potentiometer system, is I can link everything up, synchronize it, and make it all work perfectly. And there is a little description of doing that here. So in order to control potentiometer zero, I write command 0x11. So that is 11 hex. Um, and here is how the command byte is organized. So 10 is shut down, 01 is write data. So that would be a 1 on the uppermost nibble or the most significant nibble of, so a nibble is four bits, a nibble is four bits. I like, I like the word nibble too. It, it, it makes me think that it's almost snack time. Um, and then in the lower nibble, I need to write a one one. So a one one in binary, one one zero zero in binary is dun 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 three. Um, yeah, counting in binary is weird, right? Like, why would 1, 1 be 3? So, what I need to do is I need to send a um, write data. So, I want to write data. So, that's a 1 for the first nibble, and then a 3 for the second nibble. And that tells the RAS, or it tells my potentiometer that I want to write to both pot, or both potentiometers at the same time. And then I want to write just a data value. I think this is where you would write in somewhere between 0 and 255. So that would be, let's do it, I'll just write a 0. So 0, 0. Um, and then I guess I should probably close it. Spy.close. Uh, let's save that. Let's save that and just write it and see what happens. Um, so. I did a lot of this over the last couple of days to see how it would work and how the spy bus works. And one of the things that I did was I connected my oscilloscope so that as I wrote these commands to the spy bus, we could actually see what is happening in real life. So when I issue this command, I actually expect things to happen on this bus. Um, and let's see how I have this connected. I believe I have it connected. Um, well, actually, we might have to, we might, you know what, we'll send a command and we'll see how I have it connected. I, I forget exactly how to have this thing plugged in. If I go over to my iPhone, you can see I do actually have it plugged in. Let's, in fact, let's do that really quickly because I'm doing a lot of coding. Um, you can see, I'm going to pull my phone off so it can get a little closer. You can see that I have uh, these um, clips. So these are my MSO clips. I'm using an MSO today. So this is the digital input of my oscilloscope back there. And I have these clips connected to, uh oh, they were presumably connected before I pulled the, the wires, but they're connected to my spy bus. And I also have the spy bus connected from my, so this is my little digital potentiometer. The spy bus is also connected back to the Raspberry Pi back there. There's a whole mess of wires in the back. Um, but these um, are like M-O-S-I, M-I-S-O, clock, and chip select. So we should see all of those toggle on my oscilloscope when I write a command. If, if it all works. This is the big if. You know how you hook something up, you try it, you test it, and you get in front of people and you realize it is, um, it's not working that well. You hope it would. We'll go back. Uh, and let's try to run this thing. So sudo python3. We're going to try spy test. All right, all right. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that I can have the oscilloscope over on the side as well. When I hit go, do I see? <gasps> we do see commands, guys, commands, commands happening, commands happening. Did y'all see that? I don't know if we saw it. I think I'm lagging like a, 
million years behind, um, but we did, uh, we did make it happen here. If I just go over to the scope really quickly, um, I'm going to issue the command again, and we should see it happen again. So if I issue this little spy test that I wrote, boom. Commands are happening. Commands are happening, guys. Commands are happening, and it's very exciting. Um, yes, yes. So we're looking at spy bus traffic, and we are able to issue a command. So I issued a command of 13, and I'm trying to send a 13 and a 0 to tell it to write a 0 to 13. Um, but it is not working. And, and I will admit, this is where I had a little bit of trouble over the weekend. Um, or over, sorry, not the weekend, but over the last couple of days. So if I go back to my, just my desktop here, turn my desktop on, turn off the VNC really quickly. What was happening? So what is happening is I'm sending one command and then I'm waiting and sending the data. And if I look at uh, the timing diagram here, what this part expects is 16 bytes in a, or 16 bits in a row, two bytes in a row. But what I'm actually sending is just one eight bit section here and then a zero and it's not, it is not right. It's not right. Let's grab a little bit more time. Grabbing more time. We'll try to issue my command again. So I'm going to issue this uh, command again, this demo command. And I can see, there we go. So I have, I'm issuing 13, um, and then I'm writing zero. That's what I thought I was doing, but I have written this incorrectly, and it took me a really long time to figure this out. So what this timing diagram is telling me that I don't need to write two separate um, bursts to the uh, device. I have to do it all as one burst. So I have to send the command and the data all like tuk, tuk, all one burst. And so when I wrote this as my example, I'm, I'm showing you guys how I did it wrong. I like it when people show me like, how did you mess up? Because now it looks like you did it perfectly and I just don't believe that you don't mess up. But if anybody ever watches my show, they'll know I mess up all the time. I'm like the king of mess up. Uh, but <laughs> so what I'm doing here in my code is I'm sending a 13, which is attempting to write to both uh, potentiometers at the same time. We saw that in the uh, the instructions or the description of the part and then I am sending the data command separately. But what needs to happen is all of this needs to happen in one transfer and not two transfers. You would be surprised. I'll tell you what, this wasn't working and I didn't have my oscilloscope hooked up to it and as soon as you hook up your oscilloscope you can see it. You're just like, oh, that's two, two transfers and it needed to be one transfer so it needed to be like this. So this should all come out as one transfer. So uh, a subtle difference, but I'll tell you what, if you do it the way that I had it before, it'll never work. It'll never work. Can we write to this device? Oh, where's my, where's my, where's my oscilloscope? Here we go. So now, before you can see it was broken up into two distinct transfers. I have redone my code, so hopefully it will be one transfer. And boom, 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 there we go. I want to do, I want to show this um, on my webcam here so we can see what's happening. I'll see if I can make this work. Um, if I turn on my, my webcam here, look, look, the potent, my, Digital multimeter is measuring the resistance of my potentiometer. So I just set it to zero. Let's go back 
to my desktop here. And I'm going to change the code to the, the, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, guys, guys, oh man. We're, we're almost uh, to the point where we have our potentiometer working. We actually have the spy bus connected. We are writing code. Um, let's go back to editing this really quickly. And instead of sending a zero, so now I want to send uh, a command to both potentiometers. And I'm going to do the other extreme, so FF. Um, or I think you can actually write just 255 here. FF. There we go. There we go. Let's save it. And now let's issue the command. And before I issue the command, let's click over and check out my resistance. So I'm going to issue the command. Click. Boom! Look, guys, we're controlling the potentiometer with SPY. We have a digital potentiometer. It's working. It's working. Are we, are we impressed? I don't know. Are, is everybody impressed? What do you guys think? Um, we have the digital potentiometer connected. We're able to control it with the spy bus and using Python. So now the next step to our quest will be to integrate the digital potentiometer into our whole amplifier so we can actually control the volume with our potentiometer. I do have, I do anticipate a problem though. I anticipate a problem because the potentiometer that I removed, if I go back really quick, real quick, just real quick. Um, if I go back and I look at what's in here. So I'm going to draw a real quick. Uh, so I have a hundred, a uh, hundred K pot. So 100,000, can I just write a K here? Yep, there we go. I'm using some, a website called Circuit Lab just to, to draw out some stuff here. And then I have um, ground. So I have ground on one side, on one terminal of the potentiometer right here. Boom. And then on the other side, I have an amp input. Oh, right here. How do you flip this? Can you flip? Flip. There we go. Flip. So I have one side of this amp is just tied to ground, which is pretty convenient. And then the other side is tied to this guy right here. Um, and the rest of the circuit is right here. So there's a capacitor. So let's flip this. Rotate clockwise. Doesn't really matter. And this is my feedback uh, capacitor. And then what I noticed from the functional diagram, if I go back to the data sheet for this amplifier board that I'm using, the TPA31162D2, the functional diagram tells me, if I can find it, functional diagram, here it is, here it is. Um, is that the functional diagram? That's not the functional diagram. Where's the functional diagram? I think I've gone past it. Where is the functional diagram? You know when you see something before and I was like, I don't need to mark it because I'll just find it the next time. Oh, here it is. Functional diagram. Functional diagram. I have an uh, amplifier, uh, my potentiometer there, and then it goes through a capacitor as a feedback loop for my op amp. And then I have some mysterious or resistor right here that goes to the output PR feedback. So here's my output PR, and then there's output PR feedback. Uh, so basically what that means is I have another resistor over here, right here. And what I am worried is happening is this is X. I have no idea what that resistor is. And it is connected here, and I think that my 10k ohm potentiometer that was here before was probably matched to this resistor, and I don't know what that value is. So I need to figure out what that value is. 
to make sure that the voltage dividers between my potentiometer and my feedback resistor are the same. Because if they're different, it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Um, but you know what? It's just a little bit of a little bit of hardware versus software. That's what we're learning here. How software and hardware interact. We have now a software controlled digital potentiometer that I could limit to 10K if I wanted to. That is one option. Um, or I could change that feedback resistor to match the voltage divider that was there before. I just need to make sure it's proportional. So whatever uh, you know it was to 10K, I need to make sure that proportion remains the same. Or, or third option, I could change digital potentiometers to a 10K digital potentiometer. That's another option. So I have some of those coming in the mail. I have a bunch of different directions we can go, but for the next episode, I want to get the digital potentiometer controlling the volume of my speaker. So let's at least get to that. I really appreciate you guys joining today. I don't know all the nerds in the world, so please share this with the nerd in your life. If you have suggestions on different directions for the amplifier, let me know. We have some LEDs we got to keep working on, and I'm going to hang out in the chat for a little bit, and I will see you guys next week. Hopefully you had fun. Later. Bye.